What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live Engadget podcast recording. I'm Senior Editor Devendra Hardwar. Today, I'm joined with our other Senior Editor, Jessica Conda. Hey, Jess. Hello. Hello. And podcast producer, Ben Elman. Hello, Ben. Hello. Hello. It is good to see you all. I've been away for a month, so... You know, this is fun. Sherlyn is, uh, she is just tired today. So we are going to give her a little break and we're going to be <laughs> chatting about a whole bunch of stuff. Jess has overwatched two, uh, some impressions. We've got some news to go through. Sorry guys about the delay. Uh, everybody's had some sort of technical issue this morning, basically. And I don't, let me know if the audio is bad, but thank you to everybody joining us on YouTube. Uh, people are on TikTok, I believe we're streaming live on TikTok. We are everywhere. Uh, we're trying and shout out to everybody. Um, actually, I don't have the YouTube. Actually, shout out open. to Krieger Bailey, who says Portland, yes. Jamaica in the building with about a million Jamaican flags. I really? love the Caribbean representation. Here. I love it. I love it. Uh, Michael Brescher is asking, how's the new baby? Baby is good. Baby Alexander is good. You can baby see loud occasionally. In the, baby in loud, the baby not sleeping. Um, <laughs> baby cute, see, though. He's cute. He's pretty cute. Baby. I think we'll keep him. Um, yeah. <laughs> we have photos. I have photos on my Twitter and my Instagram, so you could just keep an eye out there, folks. But uh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna have a tight show today, so we're just going to get started. Maybe we'll have some room for Q&A at the end. Um, yeah. First thing uh, that we're going to do uh -huh. is that we didn't sync before, and the, yes. and chat mm -hmm. loves to sync during um, the stream. So let's do that now. So I'm going to count down from three. At the end of three, we're going to make sure that Jess and Dev are <coughs> recording. Actually, I'm going to turn on the Zoom recording also. So yes, stream, please do that. You, you might hear a Zoom recording notification right now. In oop. Recording in progress. Gives me an alert. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Say say okay to the. Sorry about that, uh, Julio. Yeah, that was uh, my own fault. But okay, if we're recording on uh, each host side, if we're sure about that, yep. then we're gonna count down from three, and we're all going to clap. And I'm just gonna um, go straight into the podcast once yes. we clap. Okay. Go. Yes. Okay. So, uh, chat, you can clap too if you want, but not before. Jonathan Anderson, you're Don't too mess it early. Up. Don't mess it up. Okay. So, we're going to clap in three, two, one. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Engadget Podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. Today, I'm joined with senior editor Jessica Condit. Hey, Jess. Hello. Hello. This morning we are chatting about Overwatch Two and uh, what the what the heck is going on with that thing? Because it's been in the works for a long time. Jess has done a preview. We've also got a bit of news, um, you know, some fun stuff, some important stuff. So stay tuned to, for all of that. As always, if you're enjoying the Gadget Podcast, please be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, you know, or your podcatcher of choice. We typically record live uh, Thursday mornings around 10 a.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. You can also find us on TikTok. And, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Actually, let's do that again. You can also find us on TikTok and uh, shout out. Like, if you like these live streams, uh, let us know where you prefer to see us. I know we have a really good YouTube audience. So if you want to, like, chat with folks, YouTube is the place to be. Let's get right into it, Jess. Overwatch 2. This game was announced a decade ago, I feel. <laughs> Just ages ago. And it's... What, what is up, like what has been up with the delay and you know, what is Overwatch 2? Because when they announced it, it never felt like, hey, this is a brand new game, right? It always felt like a patch to me. Okay, well, that's actually a lot of the feedback that I saw um, on the video that we posted. Mm -hmm. So once I did uh, the preview, a lot of people were like, oh, it just looks like, it looks like an update, it looks like an update. I cannot totally disagree with that, however, this is an early beta. I know that it feels like Overwatch 2 should be like ready to roll out right now in its full form, PvP, PvE, new modes, new heroes, new maps. No, <laughs> like it, it's just not. And that's what Blizzard has been dealing with. Like this game is just not ready. It's taking way longer. I think the uh, PvE mode is like really threw them for a loop. Can you explain um, like what those are? So PvP, it's just like Overwatch so as it is, right? Player versus PvP, player. Right. Yeah. PvP is how it is now. This is like you're playing online against other people. PvE, they're trying to add these different modes where it's you're teaming up with people and then fighting against the game, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's just a new thing for Overwatch, but not something, you know, Blizzard knows how to do this. So I, 
I'm not sure what issues they're running into. Obviously, uh -huh. there's a lot going on at Activision Blizzard right now. Um, so I, I'm not totally surprised that this is kind of languished. However, this is a beta for a portion of Overwatch 2, basically. Sure. This is just a few new maps, a few uh, a new mode, a few new heroes, like updates, and then one actual new hero. Um, and I enjoyed my time with it. <laughs> like, okay, I play a ton of Overwatch. Um, I think you, I, you've admitted to being an Overwatch fiend, right? What is your play count at this point? I about uh, 4,300 hours in Overwatch on PS5 For shame. alone. For shame. On PS5. Wow. That's, and that's not even PC, which is where I played the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I have an Xbox account. You know, it's like, <laughs> I've been playing since it came out, though. So it's like yes. not, this isn't too crazy. This is mm -hmm. over years and years. But this is my comfort game. I put mm -hmm. on a podcast, I play Overwatch, and it's like I zone out, and it's just like, it's what I do. I like playing competitive. Um, and I'm okay at the game. Whatever. <laughs> so what, um, what is your, like, overall impression from this beta? Because there are some changes, right? Uh, fewer players... Um, I think mm -hmm. the, what the overall mechanics have been reworked for in terms of like tanks and attackers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. How how does well, it yeah. feel? Yeah. So instead of um, six on six, which is how Overwatch is now, you have two tanks, two uh, damage uh, heroes, and then two healers. So this in Overwatch two, it's five v five. You only have one tank, two healers, two damage heroes, um, and to like kind of make that make sense. Uh, a lot of the tank heroes have been reworked. Uh, one of my favorites, Orisa, is like totally different. She doesn't have a shield anymore. She doesn't have her orb that like pulls people oh, uh, off ledges or, or toys. Yeah. But no, 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 I love her changes though. Like I was mm -hmm. a little worried about that because I actually like playing Orisa a lot. But now she has this javelin that like is really satisfying to throw in like a, a sniper kind of shot. And it knocks people back when it hits and it has this kind of long, nice range. Um, where you can really feel it, like, sticking into someone. Um, and then she also spins the javelin and does damage as she kind of rushes forward. So she can mm -hmm. really dive in. There's no shield. Her ultimate is way better, though. Um, so it's like, you know, there's little trade-offs there. So the tanks are a little different. Doomfist is a tank now. He used to be a damage healer or a damage character. And um, I'm I'm into most of the changes. I I think a lot of the heroes feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. um but and sojourn actually i'll talk about sojourn before i get into what i wasn't happy about um sojourn is the new damage character and she's kind of like soldier 76 uh but with a little bit more like techno science built into her she mm -hmm. can slide she has this really cool power slide that i think is going to be <laughs> overused very quickly um uh, but, but in it's, some it's games like, that's just a thing like everybody slides because yes, it's a great way to dive into do. cover yeah all you do is slide most yeah uh -huh. a lot of games is ch -ch -ch -ch. but i don't think you'll be able to quite do that with her there's like mm -hmm. a cool down you know all that but it's a long slide and she can <laughs> she can kind of go in whatever direction she wants it's really cool mm -hmm. her gun's satisfying I like her. Her ult was not m really anything. Um, she has like a sniper thing, shot type thing, right? Yeah. So one thing I mm -hmm. liked about her was she has two like shots out of her main gun, her rail gun. One is just her primary fire, which is um, it. You have you have to lead your shots, right? They're gonna projectile hit your your targets, and then her secondary fire, which is uh, right click on PC is a sniper shot but it hits mm -hmm. directly it's hit scan so it hits directly where you put it so you have to switch between leading your shots mm. and getting damage to load up your hit scan shot which does a ton of damage but you don't have to lead so it's like there's a little bit of complexity built into her and i like that yeah um yeah. but otherwise she's kind of basic mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know, i mean it, it, it seems it, like here's okay. the thing i used to play a lot of overwatch 2 especially like when it launched and i think over the last few years i kind of just fell off because they kept changing the game in a way that made me that made it feel unwelcome to me. I think like everybody kind of became a damage dealer at one point, right? Yes. Like it's a big push into that, a big push into like really making it nice for the esports uh, players and that crowd, and not so much for the general players. Like, did you feel that at all? You know, over the past few years, Jess. Well, the game got stale, right? Yeah, like it's, yeah. There just haven't been updates. And I do think the last time they really did an update, they were focused more on esports and mm -hmm. like trying to make the maps make sense for Overwatch League. Um, and since then, it's been, I mean, I swear it's been like two years since we got 
any mm-hmm. serious updates for this game. Which um, is when did they announce Overwatch Two? Wasn't that two or three? Years like two ago? years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like like seriously, this has been this has been coming for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why it feels like it should be like more done than it is maybe to a lot mm-hmm. of people. Um, uh, you know, I see I see the work. I see where it went. I see what they're doing. I think Overwatch Two in in beta form is on the right track. I think people will be happy with it. Um, I do hope it's a little more substantial feeling when it rolls out so people aren't just like, oh, this could have just been a patch. Mm-hmm. Um, because would already... To, I, would, mm-hmm. Is it a new title that you'll have to buy? Because wasn't the announcement like, Overwatch players will just get Overwatch 2, right? Oh, I don't remember, actually. I don't mm-hmm. remember how the pricing structure is working, but I would hope so. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I doubt it. It's Blizzard. They're going to make you pay for whatever. Like, I, yeah. No, they're going to charge if they can. So mm-hmm. this might be a full a full game, but maybe it'll be discounted if you own it or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but like some of the changes. So like May is is one of my mains, and she's like totally been nerfed. I don't enjoy what they've done with her. They've really they've taken away her. They ruined ability. my girl. Like she she they was so good. Her. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so like I actually last night I was playing and I was playing the beta on PC and I was I was playing May and I was just like kind of sad. I was like getting frustrated. Mm-hmm. Um, and then before I, she used to be able to freeze people, right? Yeah. She would slow people down. She'd freeze them into block of ice, and then your team messes them up. You know when they when they break out and she said, no, that doesn't happen Not anymore. anymore. Now what? she just slows people down in a, at a constant rate, and there's no chance of them freezing at all. Her wall doesn't go uh-huh. as far. I love her. I love throwing her wall to it was so know, good. Like, just right at the yeah. edge of, of your your. So yeah, mm-hmm, I've been mm-hmm. I've been very upset about May. Um, she just doesn't feel as strong, and I do hope that they buff her because like mm-hmm. this is they're not done fixing this beta. They're not done building it. They want feedback from people. So I made sure in my video to be like, please help me she needs she needs it she deserves it we love her um yeah so so you save know, me they're, they're yeah. figuring it out so yeah please save me do we have uh now that this update is out do we have a better sense of like when the game is actually going to arrive because i mean i would i'd love to play some overwatch too but in the time i've been waiting uh the battle royale games have gotten even more like more popular like valorant and new ones popped up that didn't exist when overwatch uh, one launched halo infinite is out and for me halo infinite has become my like comfort food game because it just feels so good um yeah, do we have any sense of release at this point no so last we heard there was a rumor mm-hmm. that it's not going to come out till 2023 that hasn't been confirmed either way but feels Wh- what are you accurate. doing blizzard what i well well, they're dealing with, I mean, how many yeah. lawsuits and an acquisition yeah. and unionization efforts and just upset employees. I mean, I think there's a lot going on at Activision Blizzard mm-hmm. right now. Um, and it it makes sense to me, to an extent, why Overwatch 2 has taken so long. But it feels like this game has really languished. Uh, hey, I mean... Diablo like the, there's a lot there's a lot of just like slow moving parts at Blizzard right now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so so we'll it's see. weird it's weird how uh Overwatch has gone from feeling like a breath of fresh air for you know for Blizzard and for this like field and after they just like kind of tweaked and tweaked it to the point where um yeah it was mainly for esports people it did it's it's funny how quite fast you could go from fresh to stale I guess so I hope Overwatch 2 gives us some sort of uh I know some sort of upgrade there. Uh, you folks uh, listening, let us know. Like, are you still excited for Overwatch 2? Who do you main? Jess, how are you feeling about the game overall at this point? Like, are you you ready for Overwatch 2? I, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to play the full game. I want to sit down with it. I want to be able to play it on my PS5. Yeah, just like I do, like, chill out. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm also kind of like looking for something new. So I mean, Blizzard, hurry up! <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. I'm one of the I'm one of the last. I know this. Everyone in the chat was like, "Overwatch is still a thing." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, Overwatch is still a thing." I'm still. It's still a it. thing. Sorry. It's very popular. It is. Um, I no, mean, there's always one, games. Yeah, yeah. One thing I noticed, Jess, is like you were pretty favorable on this beta. Everywhere else I've read in all the other podcasts I've heard, people are just like disappointed to the point where uh, they. It seems like they're already hating the sequel like are you feeling like are you feeling do you understand like why some people are just like not fully into what's happening here yeah absolutely absolutely i mean 
they're adding new stuff. Mm -hmm. exactly. They're doing exactly what they said. And this is just a taste. This is just a sliver, blah, blah, blah. I understand that. I understand mm -hmm. the limitations of what they're showing us, which is why I think I'm being a little more favorable. Because mm -hmm. um, I think people, when they hear beta, they, they just want to they wanna jump into the game. And this yeah, isn't free, the full it's game. A free, the free menu game. is nothing. Like, Let me play it early. Yeah. That's all beta means for people. Yeah. Right. So I just like, I'm kind of tempering what they're actually giving us, you know, I'm trying to temper my expectations because this is not the full game. Um, but it feels like Overwatch. It feels like more Overwatch. It feels like fresh maps. It looks way better. It sounds way better. You know, all that stuff, it's upgraded. I think if you like Overwatch, you'll like Overwatch too, mm -hmm. based on what I played in the beta. Um, but is it going to break a new barrier, you know, like start, start this whole like Overwatch um, chaos again? Like, I don't <laughs> know. I, I don't know if this is going to be enough to really draw maybe a new crowd. Maybe it'll only be for the old crowd, which is not a great strategy. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. We will keep an eye on this. And uh, I hope, I mean, Blizzard has a lot of stuff to fix, but you know, I, hopefully like this game will do the fans justice at some point. Stay tuned for more on Overwatch 2 down the line. Let's move on to some other news. And we've got you know, we're going to go for something very fun to something not so fun, which is the like the crumbling state of abortion rights in America right now. And the the specific thing for us, which I think is worth talking about, is there have been there's been a lot of good coverage about like what this means um, for your privacy, right? Specifically, um, maybe if you live in a place where uh, they're going to start criminalizing abortions. Uh, maybe you need to start hiding your digital trail. Maybe you just start need to start thinking about this. I don't know if like this is something you followed at all, Jess, but it is something I want to highlight. Um, there's a great piece uh, at the Washington Post called Your Phone Could Reveal If You've Had an Abortion. Um, there are some good op-eds out there. Uh, online privacy becomes critical if Roe v. Wade is overturned, uh, is an opinion piece at Bloomberg. A lot of good advice out there, and a lot of it comes down to just being very smart about your privacy and like the messaging you use and how you search for things. Um, first of all, Jess, like this is a crazy crappy time, but do you, do you have any thoughts about what's happening and how people can kind of take their information and keep it private? Um, honestly, this topic is tough to it's talk tough. about. I ha it's um, I'm, I'm angry. I'm pissed. Um, and Yes, there are, there are smart things we can do to protect our privacy. Um, I don't know if tech is going to be the answer here. Mm -hmm, I understand mm -hmm. and appreciate everything that these tools can bring. Yeah, I think it's more um, like tech is the vulnerability, like not even it yes. can help. It's more like, hey, uh, these things can be used against you and you should be aware of that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, again, it's just, to me, it's just part of the problem. This is, this is, um, I know this is our wheelhouse to talk about the tech of it, but this one for me hits, hits in a place that feels hopeless and helpless. It's hard for me yep. to think about any solutions with it. It um, is, so, it, it yeah. does feel like every week there is a new thing happening this year. That's just like, oh, Hey, uh, the world is kind of falling apart. Uh, I hope, I hope we kind of recover from this. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that there was a lot of chatter about, um, I was watching on Twitter, a lot of people were saying like, uh, avoid those pregnancy apps, you know, the pregnancy tracking apps, tracker, because yep. th those could like be things that are used against you. I think the, the overall opinion from a lot of like information journalists is that, that that's actually not the thing. That's not the thing you need to worry about. You may need to worry more about like text messaging and how you search for locations and things like that. Um, specifically like in some States where, if police get access to your phone and they look through like what's happening and what you're doing has become criminalized because uh, that is the state of our country right now, uh, you should just protect yourself. So there's a lot of advice out there about using secure messaging apps. Uh, be careful how you search for things and erase your history for things. You know, let's just be careful because uh, the world is currently a hellscape. I don't I, I, like I don't know like where we move on from this as a society. Uh, there is a good story advice. Uh, just talking about like the the real issue, uh, data brokers sell your location data, and they specifically have been selling location data of people who visit abortion clinics, which is just mm -hmm. the thing I want to highlight of like the insidiousness of our digital trails and the stuff happening right now. So tech isn't the solution, but it could, in some places, like it could be a huge vulnerability for you. 
So just keep that in mind. Uh, anything you want to add, Jess? Uh, just that uh, I would love to look into ways that tech can maybe help uh, people with less access. I mean, mm -hmm, we're talking mm -hmm. about people who are reading tech blogs or reading, like, how can I protect myself? Mm -hmm. These are people that have devices, uh, access, all these things. I think the people that are most affected by all this movement are people who this may be the last thing on their mind. Mm -hmm. The fact that their that their phone might be tracking them, like it's just will not yeah. even cross their yep. mind. Yep. Uh, that's that to me is a, is a pretty core issue. These are the most vulnerable people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we shall see. Yep. We shall see. Um, let's move on to something else, uh, which I think you may have some thoughts on Jess, which is uh, the Embracer group continuing to buy everything, right? They have picked up <laughs> from Square Enix, Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal. And I, I'm sure you've been following Embracer, right? Like this, mm -hmm. what is Embracer Group to be like, let's just put that up there. What are they? Here. Well, I'm opening mm -hmm. our, our page. Yeah, <laughs> so we, I... have a, we have a feature on them, but they are, yeah. let me just put this out there. Like they are a huge, huge studio um, mm. based in Sweden. They currently... Uh, once this deal happens, they will have 124 internal studios, 10,000 game Jeez. developers, 14,000 employees. Like, this is a big juggernaut, and they're not nearly a household name like Blizzard, you know, or Activision or something. Yeah. It is just this wild. Like, mm -hmm. it, this is kind of where the industry has been trending, right? Like mm -hmm. the this era of consolidation, which is kind of how we started off this year, um, where Microsoft is buying a ton of companies, like even Sony is buying what it can. Um, and, and just these mid-tier studios are disappearing and they're being absorbed into these huge conglomerates. And yeah, there's a lot of money out there and we don't know the names of all the companies that own that money. Like, this is just true. Uh, we didn't know Tencent until we had to, you know, like all this mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so, so yeah, this is, this is not too surprising. Um, and it, it does represent cash flow into the industry, right? Like these studios are, are getting picked up. They get a sense of stability. But there are drawbacks with that potentially. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, well, they're, they're coming from Square Enix too, so they should have felt stable. It's not like they right. were just indie folks, but no, yeah. But why? Yeah, why was this deal? Well, on because the table? Square really would like right? often throw them under the bus, right? Like, aren't they the exactly. ones? Like, it's basically every time Square Enix has like a a bad uh, quarter, they're like, uh, that Tomb Raider didn't sell good. Yeah. What are these Western studios doing? They just keep failing us. Uh, screw these studios. Um, so they just sold them all, I guess. Yeah. Exactly. They mm -hmm. were sick of it. They were done with it. So yeah, maybe we'll get a little refresh out of these studios, right? I mean, we, we the news is Eidos Montreal is doing a new Deus Ex. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those games, those yeah. recent two those games great. were really good. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I Cyberpunk, wouldn't give me more that. Deus Ex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, well, that's Cyberpunk really wanted to be mm -hmm. JSX. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice try, guys. But <laughs> yeah. And there's some others. I mean, they have had some big flops too. Like Marvel's Avengers came from uh, Crystal Dynamics, right? Or one they no, lost that a was ton of money on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, which was yeah. a bad game, um, but also like from all by all accounts, like it was pushing the sort of like destiny like uh systems like turning into a game that will live forever and you have to push money into um kind of hurt it whereas i know a lot of people who really like the single player um that guardians of the galaxy game which is really really good i know you've played yeah. a bit of that um i played a bit yeah i thought it was great it was fantastic didn't sell enough for square enix so you know they're just, just gone. Uh, I know, sure I know it won thing. some awards. Mm -hmm. People loved it at the Game Awards. It's really um, good. It's really it well written. Yeah. Didn't do it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so that is Embracer Group. Every time I hear the name Embracer Group, I'm like, it's just the Borg. Embrace the Borg. Embrace us. Give us all You're of your such IP. A nerd. <laughs> wow. I'm not even a Star Trek fan. It's more like when you name yourself Embracer, it just feels, it feels nefarious, like by default. I'd say, don't like, embrace me. Don't hug me. I don't know you. Face hugger. Yeah, it's yeah. not great. It doesn't sound great. comforting. Your embrace. Yeah. Ooh, God, don't, please, no. Yeah. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the hive mind. Uh, so that's Embracer Group. We'll be hearing more about them for sure. And uh, some quick tidbits. Um, Sonus announced, or Sonus didn't announce, but uh, a story leaked out 
I believe from The Verge, that Sonos is working on a $250 soundbar called the Ray. And that is, um, I think the Beam is their cheapest soundbar right now. That thing is like 400. So 250 bucks, pretty good. Good for a Sonos soundbar. What I'm really interested in is that um, you can use it in both uh, as a soundbar or as a rear speakers, and you can stand it up vertically. So you can have these tall ass speakers uh, that will also give you a bit of like Dolby Atmos up firing sound from your rears. That is pretty wild to me. Um, I think a lot of Sonos fans like, would buy these just for that because that would be a really interesting upgrade for your system. I don't know. I see in your background, Jess, I see classic equipment. I see amplifiers. I see an equalizer. Are you into the connected speaker game yet? Um, I am to an extent. I have a nice sound bar for my TV and <laughs> that's it. That's it. Good and sound. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wish I could, uh, I, I could point my camera to here, but right beside my computer monitor are two like giant studio monitors or mm. giant bookshelves, actually, the Kef Q150s. And it's like, I, I think I'm addicted to speakers. I just love the way speakers look and feel. And, uh, you know, I like hearing new things. So that's my, that's my kink, I guess. It's all speakers. Wow. I yeah. love it. Give me more speakers. I love learning please. more about you. Great. My car has way too many speakers. I love speakers, everybody. Um, final <laughs> thing Have you seen the Obi Wan trailer, Jess? No. <laughs> what are you? I need to get Sherlyn back here. I know. I'm sorry. She's it's much okay. better it's at okay. the pop culture stuff than I am. Yeah. No, that's I'm not sure even true. I, that's not even true. She has be... she has her own style of thing. Um, I, I just want to shout out there is a new Obi-Wan trailer out there. I was a little uh sketchy. I, I felt like the first one did not look good, especially uh some of the villain work, like uh they they really did Rupert Friend dirty, the guy who's basically the new big villain, the Inquisitor, the sort of like proto Darth Vader type dude. Um, he looks terrible. Uh, but this is going to be a fun series, I guess. I don't know. Wait, wait. Have you seen any of the Star Wars shows on Disney, Jess? Uh, Mandalorian's good. Mandalorian's yeah, worth watching for Baby I Yoda. A, I watched a season of The Mandalorian. There you go. I don't turn on Disney Plus. I'm, I don't think I have a subscription anymore, actually. So I am yeah. clearly the wrong person for this segment. <laughs> Tell me you do not have to entertain small humans without telling me. Yeah, I have dogs. They watch 90 Day Fiance with me. They'll They're watch very everything. happy about it. Yeah. You ever put it on dog TV and just like uh, stuff that they would be into? My cats love to watch like uh, bird feeder camps. It's their wow. favorite thing in the world. No, no. Yeah. I put on Twitch streams when I leave the house. It's mm -hmm. NPR or Twitch streams. They're very, they're very uh, into. They're both well informed things. and like serious gamers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Super smart you. dogs. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to some quick shout outs uh, just for some coverage we've got over here. I don't know if you guys have noticed, and uh, we have done a whole bunch of Formula E coverage, and that is the mm -hmm. electric Formula One counterpart. Uh, Billy Steele from Engadget has been in Monaco for the uh, Formula, was it E Prix? Not Grand Prix, but E Prix is what's going to be happening. These cars look wild. They are super fast, and Billy has done a ton of stories like and some videos out there. So be sure to check those out. Um, I remember like when Formula E was just starting out and they were doing a few things in New York. So it is really wild to see them already doing Monaco races. Uh, we have a best gifts guides for grads, uh, for basically good tech gifts for grads out there. Um, really useful, especially for high school students. If you know a high schooler who is moving on to college and they need some new gear and new stuff to support their experience, uh, this is a really, really good set of gifts and things to look out for. And also, you know what, guys? Like, I, I was a college IT guy. If you've got questions about that, are you preparing your child or your sibling or somebody for college? Uh, send us an email at podcastinggadget.com. Let us know if you have any questions about that. I've got so many recommendations. I miss recommending products to people. So just like, what is the one thing that exists right now that you wish you had in college? Because I have so many. Now that I think about oh. like, given how much has changed, right? Well, just honestly, the the camera on my smartphone. <laughs> or your the, smartphone. Like, smart, your smartphone. Just my smartphone, itself. yeah. Yeah. It's come a long way. So that's like that's the the biggest. But like honestly, just a, a ring light. I it would have been <laughs> amazing. Light. Would have been great. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything would have been great. I mean, when yeah. I it was like 2001 and over that summer, I like I built my first desktop computer and I lugged that sucker to college. It was before LCDs were like affordable. So I had both a CRT 
and a freaking desktop computer. Just give me, just give me a laptop. Give me a modern wow. laptop. Would have made my life so much easier in college. Yeah. No, that's true. I had to go to the computer lab yes. to do some work when I, I was in to college. Run the computer lab. Kids. Yeah. 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 Great. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, a lot has changed, and I'm sure like gift ideas has changed too. So yes, you know yes. what? It's a it's an exciting time. Shout out, give us an email. I want to give some suggestions at podcastinggadget.com. Let's move on to what we let's move on to what we're working on. Jess, shout out. Like, what do you what do you are you doing some previews? Are you doing some reviews? What's Ooh, up? I'm doing some previews, baby. Uh -huh. Um, so we I talked about this I think last time I was on the podcast kind of heading into a dry summer for games, right? Like it feels like there's really not a lot coming at us. Um, but I do have a few previews coming up. I don't think I can say exactly what, but I'm actually very excited about one of them. Okay. And the other one, you'll never know. And I'm not going to tell the PR people which one is which. <laughs> <laughs> they can't make it mad at you. Yeah, they don't know. Yeah, yeah. But we got some, we got some cool uh, early looks coming. So yeah. Very cool, very cool. I'm just going to shout out a couple of things here. Uh, I am currently in the middle of testing Alienware's QD OLED, Quantum Dot OLED Gaming Monitor, which uh, may be like the best computer monitor I've ever like touched and used for a very long time. So look out for my review that's going to be going up soon. And we're also doing some pieces on like weird uh, kitchen gadgets. And I got sent uh, from one of my favorite weird gadget designers, Jerry Roth, uh, he, if you remember like a decade ago, he made these ceramic speakers mm -hmm. and they're just like beautiful white ceramic and wood. It's, it's beautiful stuff. He made a machine called the Osma that is an instant cold brew machine. And it uses like acoustics. It uses like speaker reverberation to like, to like extract good coffee taste, um, without heat. It's wild. I love this guy. Oh He's my gosh. Crazy. I need it. It's a cold I brew. need that. It's a cold brew. Yeah, it's really good. It's basically like an espresso shot, except like not as harsh. It is like a cold brew espresso shot. It's sort of like if you buy concentrated cold brew, you sometimes have to cut that. Yeah, you have to cut it. You have to add like two parts water or milk or something to your concentrate. It is sort of like a perfect little cold brew shot. And um, it is, it's not super easy to use. It's kind of a basic thing right now, but it is something he is planning to sell to like coffee shops. So instead of having like a big jug, of cold brew stuff that they just throw at you or like the nitrous stuff, which has mm -hmm. become more and more popular. You basically brew a shot of this thing and you get this like beautiful, creamy, uh, balanced, tastes really good uh, shot of cold brew. So that's what I've been drinking. I'm gonna be writing that up soon. This machine is $700. It is not for anybody except uh, restaurants, I think. But man, does it taste good. Tastes so good. Perfect vibe. I'm jealous. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. It is like a, what is the cold brew version of a warm blanket? That is kind of what it feels like. It's just like, ah. I think that's hot coffee. It's just hot coffee. <laughs> it's so no, but cold, blanket. make it cold with ice. Right, but make uh, it cold. Make it a warm blanket, but cold. Come mm, on, guys. A refreshing sip of coldness, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's all good. Do you have any pop culture picks, Jess? Like anything you've been watching? Oh, yes. You want to so, shout out? So I actually kind of vaguely referenced this already because i talked about twitch streams and i talked mm -hmm. about 90 day fiance so what i watch and listen to is 420 day fiance <laughs> it's a twitch stream and a podcast yeah and they get high and they talk yeah. about 90 day fiance and married at first sight and like a perfect title stuff. perfect title i totally get it but yeah you totally get it immediately you're like oh yes i know what you're doing mm -hmm. and they're hilarious it's two comedians miles gray sophia alexander <laughs> alexandra and um they're they're amazing. They keep me company. Um, and it's, it's just like very funny, but accurate opinions on the mm -hmm. trash TV that I watch. That's mm -hmm. all I need in life. So, yeah. so you're both watching the trash TV and like, uh, analyzing the trash TV at the same time. Like you're just juggling exactly. all the trash. Exactly. It's like a trash well, universe over there. Yeah. When you watch the shows like 90, uh, 90 day fiance, you yeah. know, it's just like half the time you want to scream at the screen because these people are idiots <laughs> or they're cruel, you know, or they're whatever. Yeah, 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 so yeah. it's like, you watch the episode and you're filled with this like rage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you have, then you listen to the podcast and they say exactly what you need to hear. And that's great. It's that's great. great. Yeah. It's nice. Really great. Great recommendations. And uh, I just want to shout out a couple of things. Season two of undone uh, the Amazon uh, prime video series, which I love the first season. I talked about it a lot here. It is the rotoscoped animation. Uh, so it's like animated, but they look realistic. Um, it's a show created by Kate Purdy and Raphael Bob Waksberg, who co-created uh, BoJack Horseman, 
incredible show. Everybody should watch it. Um, about a girl who basically discovers that she can like leap through time and like you know travel to alternate uh, realities in a sense to like basically cross dimensions. Uh, I love the first season. It is so well written and um, like. It is really emotional, like it's really smart while being funny and realistic, like sort of like if a 20 something actually got these powers and like had to deal with her emotional trauma, her losing her dad at a young age, she starts to see visions of her dead father from like another universe. And it's just like this really cool balance of stuff. Very Satoshi Khan. Um, I think the second season is even better like a reminder that uh, Rosa Salazar is fantastic. So I think you would like this, Jess. Um, I think anybody listening to this show who likes my sci-fi recommendations, check this out. It's really good. I also want to shout out Pachinko. Uh, this is an adaptation of a very, very popular uh, novel. It's on Apple TV+. Plus. It tells the story of a Korean family going from Japanese-occupied Korea to uh, basically immigrating to Japan uh, you know, at a time where nobody really wanted them there. And it, crossed, like, it crosses several different time periods, like the, the early 1900s to mid-19, like pre-World War II, and then like 1980. So it like, follows his family for a generation. It's beautiful. It's really well told. And I think if you come from an immigrant family or you're really attuned to those stories, you'll appreciate this show. So check it out. It's Pachinko on Apple TV+. Plus. And uh, I think it's definitely worth watching. Anything else? Things. Yeah. So Pachinko, yeah, yeah. I've actually, like, I've heard a few people say it's, like, must-see TV. It is must-see TV. Another, mm-hmm. that's another, like, streaming service I actually don't have right now is Apple TV+, Plus, but it's just, I, I need it. Like, there's you need so many it. You got to get some Ted Lasso watch, on, so at the I'm very least. Like, yeah. yeah, at least, right? Yeah, Severance, I know, all these all these shows. So, yeah. Oh, Pachinko's man, on the list. Severance. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, be sure a couple episodes ago, I think a, a month ago, we had a chat with the Severance writer. So be sure to mm-hmm. you know, go back, listen to that, folks. But you know what? That is it for our show today. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own managing editor, Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find me online at, at Devendra on Twitter and Instagram. You can find baby pictures there for sure. And you can find Jess online. Where? Where, Jess? Uh, Jess Condit on Twitter and Jess L. Condit on Instagram. Cool. All the dogs, Email us at all the me. All the dogs. Email us at podcastinggadget.com. Leave us a review on iTunes and subscribe on anything at that. Leave us a review on iTunes and subscribe on anything that gets podcasts. Thanks, folks. We're out. Cool. We got a little time for okay, Q&A. Yeah. Sure, Lynn's here. Compact, Hi. Yeah, compact Hello. episode. Um, I've been watching Severance also finally after uh, getting so good. So um, good. Su- like a bunch of suggestions from this podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's very good at showing very small bits of how depression sinks in, especially mm-hmm. if like mm-hmm. depression mm-hmm. is like, or especially if like your job is like sucking the life out of you. <laughs> like, uh, I think, ooh, was I just watching the second episode or maybe the mm-hmm. third episode? Um, there is a moment where Adam Scott, the main character, also in um, Parks and Rec and all of that, mm-hmm. um, has someone over at his house and he has like a couple bulbs out in his like a light in his hallway and he's like Mm -hmm. oh yeah i haven't really gotten around to like doing that which is literally like what depression is like Mm -hmm. if you're just like oh i don't even have the mental energy or desire to make my own living conditions better then yep that's depression Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's uh yeah the show goes hard don't worry. Mm-hmm. Even so our, yeah, I didn't. Our, I didn't realize it was quite like that. That's interesting. I've just heard it's very, it's good. I haven't. It's very it Brazil. Really. It's sort of like it is funny in like a like yeah, okay, kind of and ironic way. A yeah. lot Dark. of yeah. There's a lot of really interesting kind of architectural references too. Mm-hmm. Like the mm-hmm. um, when Dev was describing it, I was like, oh, okay, so it's like. Um, uh, her or something where it's sort of it's like her kind of like or retro futuristic yeah uh, you know they use really old computer terminals. the building from control the ministry of control uh-huh. yep. sort of like that yep. is a big part okay. which is, it's an actual uh, office building in new jersey like yep. one of the it old was ones filmed yeah. at a bell labs campus mm-hmm. 
um, in uh, New Jersey. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's kind of got the like international architectural style that you'd also see at the Seagram's building in mm -hmm. Manhattan. I was just walking by that like last Friday and I was like, whoa, that building is both like really cool, but it also gives me bad vibes. It makes bad me vibes. feel like some... Because uh, br that's it. all brutalist ar architecture gives me well, really no, bad but it, vibes. I mean, yeah. it, but that wasn't brutalist. It was just like kind of like... Yeah. Uh, sparse and kind of Nordic, I guess. Mm. Um, but what I'm talking about <laughs> specifically is kind of like the interior design. Mm -hmm. um, the, the whole interior design of Severance is like really inspired by like Eero Saarinen, like the guy mm. who designed like Eames chairs. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if you've ever been to the, another New York reference, I apologize, but if you've ever been to like the TWA hotel outside yeah, yeah, yeah. of JFK, yeah. like big like swaths of um, like wall-to-wall -wall carpet that's yeah. a Retro Future color. is such a really wild, like they're using like 80s era computers in the office too, even though it's set in modern day. So it's a very like, uh -oh, I like that though. design whiplash going on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. This show freaks me out because if you've ever had a job that felt like that it was sucking the life out of you, it mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. puts you back in that place. It is basically the, the office space like reboot. Yeah. 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 Uh, that was my first question to the, to the writers. Like what broke you as a job? And it, it was some like random office thing he was doing in LA and, it is very easy to like never see sunlight, you know, and lose your soul a little at those jobs. That is when I, yeah. Yeah. We're not meant to live like that, man. That's not yeah. life. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why the show is hitting so hard right now. And mm -hmm. um, especially as we're talking about return to work or maybe not return to work. Do you want to just like hang out with your dogs and maybe your kids or your roommates or like whoever mm -hmm. you prefer to hang out with versus having um kind of compulsory chat with people at the office yeah that's another just... thing the show is really mm -hmm. good at like just stilted office banter god <sighs> why you're not making me want to watch this show i gotta say like it is, why would i want to put myself back there <laughs> you know when, I, when last have you been working in an office consistently jess I've never worked in an office. Yeah, baby. so <laughs> first of all, shut up. Baby. What do you, get out of here. Oh, I've had God. I've had jobs that sucked my soul out, but like, <laughs> I, yeah, never, never an office job, thankfully. It looks, yeah. I mean, it yeah. would, it would destroy me. This is- When crazy. I started freelancing in 2009, I was like, I was coming off of an IT job, which even wasn't like a, a boring office job, but I was like, never again, never being stuck in an office no. again, please. No. Okay, so no, like, chat, yeah. let's talk about something that you want to talk about. Like we'll finish up our our little chat about severance or bad office jobs or something, but like ask us any questions you have if you have buyers if you have uh you know a guide to buying things if we, if you want a guide to buying things um mm -hmm. ask us about that or um anything that we're looking forward to I'm looking I see uh I see an interesting comment because there were people were talking about like older gadgets uh, Buddy 305 left points out in 1990, a 55-inch TV was considered big screen. Today, 83 to 100 is big screen. Don't even for, like don't forget those TVs were boxes, right? They were four mm -hmm. by three. So, yeah, deep. Deep. they were they were big and deep. Yeah. And uh, because you were if you were watching a widescreen movie, it still would not be that great, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it is funny that yeah, we actually have wider uh, TVs now, but they're actually not as big as they used to be even yeah. though the screens themselves are bigger. Also, I think I accidentally mm -hmm. bought a TV that's too big for my house, but I'm not going to change it because I can see it from my office perfectly. Is so that the like, one well, above your mantle right now that I see behind you? Yeah. 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 Is Wait, that 65 inch TV? It's 65. You're good. It's 65. Good. I don't know. Can you see? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I can okay. see it's no, perfectly. Yeah, no, it's over there. I, it's... I was looking in the wrong place. <laughs> oh, okay. If you could fit a 65 inch TV, to me, that is like the ideal size for most size. living rooms because like you're right. you're immersive you can you know like 55 is too small it's too Thank small you. in a big living i room. measured yeah i measured yeah. it out and i was like that's gonna look no. silly like go 65 I, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah go bigger folks um that, that is my main thing it was funny. I saw TikTok a few days ago um, where it seemed like all these Zoomers were discovering bias lighting in on TV <laughs> or like around TVs. That's cute. Um, because they were like, oh my God, like it makes it so um, like immersive. And 
Um, also, like this mm -hmm. is using like one of Gen Z's favorite things, which is like those LED strip lights. Mm -hmm. um, you don't, so you don't need to have a one. microcontroller for the LED strip lights. That's I think everybody need. should, you should put a light behind your TV, but it doesn't have to like interact with what's on screen. Just like it actually balances out the brightness of the TV. So your eyes aren't strained as much. Mm -hmm. So it is actually, it feels good when I have a light behind my TV. I need uh, to get, I love LED strip lights. You say mm -hmm, it's a Gen mm -hmm. Z thing. I might, I'm not Gen Z, but love it. Yes. I, I have anybody a can be a zoomer here. of the state of mind. We're moving away from demographics and we're moving towards psychographics. You heard it here first. Mm -hmm. Ooh, just like the, uh, the genre has shifted for Real Housewives, it's now true crime. It's yeah. true crime. Yeah. And that's my input. <laughs> Uh, so we were also talking a little bit about, like, uh, a bit earlier in the chat, we were talking about, like, what we wished that we had when we were in school. Um, mm -hmm. Some people were saying, like, they just wish that they had a laptop, period. Yeah, that's yeah. it. D give me a laptop. Yep. Um, Truly. Uh, basically, all of the stuff that you would have in your smartphone, the same way Jess was talking about it. Um, I was in school around a time when, like when this new technology comes out, you can see who has money and who doesn't mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. whose family has money and who doesn't. And so like, I was the one with a phone who like, I could throw it at someone if I needed to, yep, um, absolutely for a crime. <laughs> and I had some friends who were like, Oh yeah, let me just like unlock this thing on my phone. Have you seen this new app called Snapchat? And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> mm hmm I remember being obsessed with my best friend's razor phone in high school and just like, I thought she was so rich. I was like, razor? <laughs> damn. I was selling those for pennies. Like within a few years, like those things were basically Dude, giving them she away. Was, yeah. She was the only one that had one and yeah. she was a little rich. So yeah, there you I go. It. <laughs> Something I remember <laughs> very viscer viscerally is the razor, the razor flip phone mm -hmm. tucked into the juicy couture sweatpants. <laughs> Not because Ooh. like it wasn't. It that was a big New York pocket. look. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah. like tucked into the waistband. Yeah. Absolutely. And so sometimes I'll like walk around with my phone tucked into my waistband if I like am wearing something that doesn't have pockets or something. And somebody's like, where, you know, like, that's weird. Where have you, did you see that? And you were like, I'm, I'm like, obviously you did not like go to uh, a public school in the early 2000s, I guess. Well, it's going to come back, you know, if, if it was fashionable once it will be a thing again. We have foldable electronics. We got to fold them around things, you know? So there you go. Yeah, true. The I want the the the, the squishy screen ones, whatever they are, the flips, <laughs> <laughs> the bendable screens, whatever. I want those. Jonathan right. Anderson is asking, like, is there a guide to M1 chips and why you don't likely need uh, the M1 Ultra? Uh, I mean, that's we the guide. We were talking about that before. That yeah, is that's, the guide. That's the guide. That sentence don't, is the guide. If you need it, if you can afford it, then then sure, yeah, then get the M1. Don't don't like take out a big loan again an M1 Ultra. Chris Angelo Perez mm -hmm. says, "Where's the Netflix show Juicy Couture and Razors? I'm in. I mean, it's <laughs> it, it's not going to be called that, but it's probably going to be some kind of mm -hmm. show set in the early 2000s that has mm -hmm. that kind of set. We dressing. need to do like the VH1, remember the 80s, but it's like remember <laughs> remember the tech." that existed and like oh my god is that not um, a thing already i think it's more like you let yeah. kids play with old gadgets that is a thing on uh, youtube but i'm thinking yeah. like the when bh1 used to do like the that 80s the toys that meet us yeah, yeah, yeah that toys, seems yeah. like the sort of thing that like would be really easy for netflix to produce they could just they, like, they are doing toys do, that made us so it's like well, sort yeah. of like that yeah they could just do that same idea of uh, you know i love the 80s i love the 2000s did you guys or... talk about netflix's complete collapse over the last few weeks because uh no th th no bueno no bueno things are real bit. bad so actually oh oh yeah. that's a thing yeah. okay i thought you were yeah, saying you meant a show called complete no collapse. they're the show is witnessing <laughs> netflix's downfall yeah. yeah yeah it's just a state of mind for netflix at this point mm -hmm. yeah um yeah. I, well but i think that it's really interesting that w they okay they lost subscribers for the first time in a decade yeah. that's mm -hmm. a big deal the number of subscribers that they lost i remember seeing a figure in an article it was like two hundred thousand subscribers yeah that's like less than a football stadium or less than some football stadiums at least yeah we'll I, but they're we'll hemorrhaging probably, money right yeah they've yeah. always been hemorrhaging money yeah. which is the thing anyway at some point we we should do like a deeper dive into the state of streaming video and whatnot mm -hmm. because 
uh shit's wild I, I think that's like the main the main main thing going on I and mean, we should wrap at some point any other questions folks? i don't think that we have any yeah i don't think we have any uh questions oh um yeah we have Be buddy 305 love saying uh dev if you like the qd yep. OLED oh, yeah. monitor you'll like a samsung mm -hmm. se ooh let me read this correctly. S95B, S95B and Sony A95K. Yes. Yeah, I mean, trust me, I, I'm looking at all the OLED TVs when I can. Um, Sony's been doing some good stuff, but it, I'm really interested in seeing where that QD OLED tech goes because those are Samsung's panels. And this Alienware monitor, weirdly, is like the first thing to, uh, to ship with it. So looks good. Here you'll hear more about that later, folks. And, well, we just got um, a really important comment, though. And <laughs> did you? It's like, did you? I think we should close on it, even. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sherlyn says, I just want to say, I love Jess so much. And I just want to say, I love her so much. <laughs> I'm going to ban Sherlyn from the chat room now. And just no, okay. uh, absolutely not. Hands up. All right, folks. So, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you want to do your credits, Ben? Yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, chat, thanks for sticking around. You're the one who makes us fun, makes this fun. Or this stream is brought to you via some very important video team members, Julio Barrientos and Luke Brooks. At, um, the chat makes it fun. The chat makes it uh, spicy sometimes or interesting that you remember stuff that we forgot and you bring things into the conversation that we just didn't even think of, you make the show better. So thanks for sticking around. Also, if you stuck around this long, you know that we live in a world of algorithms, probably better than the average person. So rate us five stars on iTunes, rate us five stars on any other podcast rating platform you can find. Tell a couple of friends about us, and we'll see you next week. Later, folks.